This is the story of Bill and the French Bell. A stray of war was near its end that cold and starry night. And tired but ecstatic from a day at my first war, I lay down on my air mattress and shut my bag up tight. Not period, but it was warm, besides my feet were sore. My hostess, Mary Hill, had let me stay in her French bell. She tucked me in beneath my cloak. I knew I would sleep well. I knew I would sleep well. But that was not to be, as late at night I heard a sound. As someone opened up the tent and made his way inside. Is this some thief, I thought? I heard him crawling on the ground. Quite bleary, but still petrified, I had nowhere to hide. My mattress flowed and swayed like I was sailing on the sea. And something like a watermelon bumped against my knee. It bumped against my knee. Now quite confused, I lay awake, I couldn't reach the lamp. So sleep was all this person sought, a place to lay his head. Perhaps this was no stranger, but a friend from our own camp. And tent collapse or other pro problem drove him from his bed. But this comforting notion I could not believe I found. For surely no one that I knew could make that awful sound, could make that awful sound. A troll or dragon, maybe Grendel, Saxon beast of yore, like some great monster out of legend howling at the moon. His labored snoring sounded like the grunt of a wild boar. His slavering sawing sighing would sure wake the household soon. But first it would wake Mariel of Tay, who shared her tent with me and also with this sleeping man the night had sent. This man the night had sent. <coughs> Rebecca, dear, she called out, trying not to be too loud. Try lying on your side so you can breathe without a hiss. It isn't me, I whispered back, still feeling rather cowed. There's someone else inside our tent. I don't know who it is. She did not scream, she did not cry, she did not try imploring. She simply nudged him till he woke and said, Why are you snoring, my lord, why are you snoring? I'm tired and I'm cold, he whined, a grumpy sad reply, as though he had the right to come and crawl through the front door. Mare sat up straight and lit the lamp. I thought that I would die. A giant man, four hundred pounds, was lying on the floor. My lord, who are you and where from? She asked, why are you here? A French bell, he said, looking round. I'm Bill, I'm from Ontier. I'm Bill, I'm from Ontier. This poor lost soul, with no intent to do us any harm, had wanted peace and quiet, had not meant to cause such strife. Sitting, blinking in the light, he had a childlike charm. He thought my bed his pillow soft, and Mariel his wife. We sent him on his way with just a lantern for his guide, and we ourselves to find our now elusive sleep we tried, to sleep we vainly tried. Now lest you think this man a perfect idiot and liar, he came to make amends to me three times on the next day. The first time with his prince he came, I was out with the choir. The second time with his good knight, but I was still away. The third time with his knight again, they had postponed their leaving to make sure that I was all right and that I wasn't grieving. Oh no, I wasn't grieving. Repentantly, he took my hand and got down on one knee. And though I did forgive him for his stumbling offense, I warned him that I thought he had not heard the last from me. For Mare and I are bards, we'd make a song for recompense. And as he walked away that day, his steps both slow and tired, his knight laughed, oh my foolish squire, they're bards and they're inspired, they're bards and they're inspired.